Hello guys and welcome back to Dark Horse FM. Wow. Today, today I'll share with you a tactic that will change your save from generations of regions to come. You can see here currently I'm just going to set the tone for what's about to happen next. We are in 3rd of December 2023. So this is not going, I don't know if the tactic is going to be ideal for just starting a fresh save, but it's always important to try football manager is always full of adventures. So quick story before I get into the tactic in detail. Earlier, I was struggling with Leeds United this season and then with Leeds United up until match day 13, I think, up until match day 13, we were struggling in the league, we were supposed to finish in the European places, we were predicted to finish high up in the table, maybe 6th or 7th or so in the European places, but they were been struggling, we were losing so many games, but then due to inconsistency and this confusion and what I'm probably going to call identity crisis anyway, we found ourselves floating above the relegation zone, maybe probably in 16th or 17th there, but it was terrible, I felt so so bad. I tried everything, I lost so many games and there are matches I could have won easily and then I lost to them like games like the persistent Brighton and then there's Watford and Southampton in the mix in there and then we lost games to those teams that we should have been winning and then there's then w when the big teams came, the likes of Arsenal and then Manchester City and Liverpool, we just kept on conceding goals against them and we somehow didn't find a way to score, just kept on shipping goals so I knew I needed a change. I tried reducing the team intensity and one of the, the I tried reducing the intensity of the tactic that I created and then things just got worse because the opposition simply just walked past us on a post and then they'll keep scoring goals. I pushed the intensity back up and again this also just made my players get tired very very easily and then they'll be shattered towards the end of the game and then we'll just be losing, we could be winning one day and then we end up losing the game 3-1 because we were completely tired and just by the end of the game so it was really really tough so i got to a point that the board actually confronted me and i have to admit it's the first time that has actually happened to me since fm17 i kid you not i really get to this point in my career saves but it happened so i'm confused as i what i promised them that i'm going to actually get the results back up and i closed my football manager and took a break i took a complete break from playing fm So Boxing Day came along and then I went to hang out with my mates and he had this cool new Omen PC so it was cool. I took my hard drive along to hang out with him and then I noticed on this PC he had FM20 as well so I thought to myself hmm, I can open my old saves here and just see you know catch up with my old FM20 saves and see everything that's going on. I actually wanted to copy some files on from new games but um, it was nice seeing my old FM20 save again on my friend's laptop so I'm seeing my old save, like I said, it made me get in my feelings a lot. So I felt good for a time being. I ran a few saves, won some games. And then just I was about to create a new tactic for my FM20 players, my regents, like I'm going to call them. I was just playing around with the roles and with my wonder kids as well, like I said. And then as I was creating a new tactic, you know, there stood this iconic tactic that I never actually got to test in FM20 for some reason. The Diablo something something. I think, I don't know, I know it has Diablo in the name anyway. So I checked the tactic and then I loaded it up in my save. It was, it was saved in the, you know, when you, when you click create a new tactic, you can always see the tactics that have already been attached to your save, ready to load up. So I just clicked that option and then I loaded the tactic to my save and then I saw that it had similar roles to the players that I would normally use in my Leeds United save. So I was like, okay, the roles might be quite adventurous, but it's not that bad. So I might as well just recreate this tactic. So I did that, then I recreated, I took some screenshots anyway, first of all, I took some screenshots and saved it into my hard drive, so when I went home, I recreated the tactic on FF22 and I'll show you the results real soon. I haven't gotten to the end of the season, but due to the results and the game that I lost before and the manner in which I have won the recent games that I have played so far, is a tactic that will actually change the way you play. And full disclosure, you might need to have certain players in certain positions but from what i've noticed so far my team is full of players that have they are at least competent in playing the certain roles that are here in this tactic they can at least like if you have a traditional fullback in your in your save that is a traditional fullback that can at least get forward and get back he probably even in the lower leagues they, he doesn't even need to know how to cross the ball because i'm going to show you one player in my squad that doesn't know how to cross the ball but he actually fits into this tactic really really well in fact he scored the first goal that this new tactic when this new tactic was he discovered one of the first goals i'll probably say of the new philosophy <laughs> let's put it that way so we'll get into the tactic in more detail right now so i'm going to also show you the results at the end of the season when i'm eventually 
done, but so far you've seen the results that I'll also show you the results of the tactics currently and how it has differed recently in the way the tactics that I used before and then the tactic that I've used now, how I managed to change things with this new tactic. So we'll look at the tactic really quickly now. In goal is the sweeper keeper on attack duty. He's been asked to pass it shorter and take and um, tackle harder as well. And then the other additional instructions for a sweeper keeper on attack. The wing back is a wing back on the left back or the right back is a wing back on support with passes shorter, cross to the byline or cross of the byline, shoot less often and tackle harder. A lot of the players in this tactic have actually been asked to play shorter passes. The ball playing defender on the right hand side is also pass a shorter, dribble less, shoot less often and tackle harder. The same instruction goes for the ball playing defender on the right hand side. The wing back on the left is tricky because um, the wing back on the right has pass a shorter, cross more, cross ball from byline, shoot less and tackle harder. But then the wing back on the left hand side is a bit more adventurous. He has been asked to take more risk, shoot less often and tackle harder. The tough role here, the role that I'm probably going to say you struggle to find players to fit in, is the Segundo Volante. But if you have a good adventurous defensive midfielder, he should be able to fill in this role perfectly. And if he can take long range efforts as well, that's also going to be very, very beneficial for you. The Segundo Volante has been asked to take fewer risks, dribble less, shoot less often, tackle harder and mark tighter. For the, um, a little disclaimer about shoot less often. If a player actually has a long range, good long range ability, and you ask him to shoot less often, it does not mean that he's not going to shoot. He's only going to shoot when he has the chance to do so. He's going to think about his shooting more often and try to pass the ball when there's a better option ahead of him. But if it's clear that he can actually take a shot, he will take the shot. In midfield, central midfield, is a ball, is a box to box midfielder in central midfield. His instructions are to pass it shorter, take more risks, dribble less, shoot less often, move into channels, close down more, tackle harder, mark tighter. This tackle harder mark tighter is one instruction I'm going to say makes your players tick in FM. But I used it in my previous in my previous tactic, but it kind of made my players get tired a lot. So it's kind of tricky to understand how Bomber Ninja works really because this tactic is from FM20. So if it's working like magic in FM22, it's probably something in the core of Bomber Ninja that actually works, that their tactics actually work. So plug and play might actually be something that still exists, even though people say the plug and play tactics are long gone. I don't think they're long gone in, in effect, really. You can actually still create good plug and play tactics. <coughs> For the attackers in this tactic, there are two inside forwards, one shadow striker and one advanced forward the inside forward on the right hand side is his passes shorter take more risks shoot less often tackle harder and mark tighter on the left hand side the inside forward the inverted winger sorry oh my god i'm so sorry it's not inside forward it's an inverted winger i hope i said inverted winger before it's an inverted winger on support duty on both sides and then on the left hand side the inverted winger has slightly identical instructions as well um yeah slightly identical instructions as well passes shorter take more risks shoot less often get further forward mark tighter and tackle harder the Central attacking midfielder is a shadow striker, so it's almost the 4-4-2 really. Um, the shadow striker's instruction are to mark tighter, tackle harder, shoot less often, and pass it shorter. The advanced forward role, his instructions are to take more risks, dribble more, tackle harder, and mark tighter. So this is one player that has been given the freedom to do basically whatever he wants. And having Karim Adeyemi in this save, he's actually a very good dribbler. So for one thing, you might want to consider to have a striker that's very mobile. If you have a target man or a, you know, the tall blue kind of striker it might be difficult to get him to play in this role so you might need to get a striker that it's very mobile looking at Karima Deyemi his traits are remarkable he's a very good runner he has pace acceleration agility as well balance is probably something I should train him to improve but as you can see he's working on it anyway but dribbling is 16 flare 11 really 11 flare <laughs> okay that's Karim Adeyemi, but he's a mobile striker, so the point is to actually get a striker that it's that is quite mobile. I'm going to show you my main striker. It's not usually Karim Adeyemi. Karim Adeyemi plays on the right-hand side or even on the left-hand side. There's a guy I call Julian Alvarez. Julian Alvarez is my main striker. So looking at Alvarez, he's similar, he has similar traits to Karim Adeyemi as well. Just that he dribbles more, so he has a lot of flair. And then he moves into channels. He's the one that has the best long range attribute in this save so long with 16 it means i had to design a different corner routine for him to have him at the edge of the box as much as i wanted him to be inside the box looking at five foot seven nah stay at the edge of the box and then looking at his acceleration and 
pace well not so fast but it has acceleration and then this flare and then this dribbling so looking at the way it is if you have a fairly good squad most of your players should be able to fit into this tactic perfectly and then if you're using a big team like the likes of liverpool and man city and bayern as well you would not find it difficult to see players that will fit into your tactic in fact your players will be looking for ways to to get games and you'll be struggling to figure out which player goes where but that's the summary of the tactic and how it works anyway i'm going to show you the results real soon so guys i realized that after recording all the players instructions i actually forgot to record the team instructions as well so i'm going to have to while i'm playing the match against norwich city as well I'm, maybe the game is going to run in the background quite slowly i'm going to go over the team instructions now the team instructions for this tactic in when the team is out of possession the team has been asked to press all the way high so the, there's a higher line of engagement and then there's a higher defensive line there's a much higher line of engagement and a higher defensive line the defensive shape the team has been asked to use the offside trap and then the trigger press is all the way to much more often what is ideally extremely urgent often um, extremely urgent pressing in previous football manager games so this is much more urgent pressing and then the prevent short goalkeeper distribution is also turned on in transition the team has been asked to counter press to counter the opposition when the ball has been won or when possession has been won and the goalkeeper's instruction has been the goalkeeper has been asked to distribute the fullbacks and roll it out which is somehow counterintuitive now that the goalkeeper is a super keeper on attack so i'm trying to wrap my head around that but it's somehow it works so let's let's not kid ourselves it actually works so far and by the way i think i lost to aston villa before this norwich game so i'm hoping that there's going to be a kind of bounce back it was an away game against Aston Villa as well and they played well but we played well as well just that we considered three goals and then we were able to score two so it feels like the old leads are trying to come back at me now but um for the good of this tactic I'm actually going to ride the challenge and then go all the way through and against Norwich I expect a better result in in possession when the team is in possession sorry I sidetracked a little bit in possession the team has been asked to play out of defense and to the full backs have been asked to overlap so the team has been asked to look for the overlap rather so the, those full backs are going to get forward a lot and the final third the team has been asked to play low crosses and to walk the ball into the box this works really really well for my team hey we scored one nil <laughs> this works really really well for leeds united because we actually have players that are not that tall except in defense so in attack our players are quite you know five foot seven five foot ten five foot eleven so the low crosses actually works for us and then the other instructions are to run at defense play shorter passes and extremely high tempo so before I miss it, I'm going to actually look at the goal now. How do we get the ball in the net? Come back, come back, come back. Can I still look? How do I go back? How do I check that? In previous FMs, I actually knew how to check my goal, but now I can't check it anymore. This sucks. Okay, hold on. Go back 10 minutes. Oh, hang on a minute. Never mind Back to my story and how I started. If you remember, we did we we actually i discussed with you how i was struggling throughout the season earlier in the video so looking at the friendlies we did well and then the season started we i didn't think anything off anything i didn't think anything was off at the beginning of the season so we, we were actually winning guys and we lost to sheffield i was like what the hell just happened we just lost to sheffield united in our own home ground so i was really really frustrated that's when i started making changes unnecessarily so we lost to west brom in the carabao cup and i almost they, at this point i think i was i was saying there's there's hope we can actually turn it around and then one defeat turn to three and we'll be beat UFA in the Europa Cup at some point but then we lost to Chelsea lost to Brentford we were actually doing well in the Europa Cup Euro Cup that's the that's the Europa League right we're actually doing well in the Europa League but then we lost to Arsenal 5-1 I was already losing my shit at this point we lost to Burnley lost to Lille in the Europa League and then we lost to Man City that's the point when I said is the point where the board actually confronted me saying hey dude you're losing too many games and then you have to turn this around i was like okay i'll turn it around and then we swapped our tactic and then we brought in the diablo tactic i just finished showing you now and then southampton has beaten us before okay not southampton sheffield united has beaten us before southampton normally beats us in the league at some point so probably in previous season and then the first game we had was against southampton just putting southampton into perspective southampton are currently if the game is going to decide to load up southampton are currently ninth in the premier league and we are currently i kid you not come on okay we're currently 15th we're 17th at some point just floating above here but then we've got a few wins and then we're back up in 15th place 
So I wanted to go in ninth, but we were able to smash them like five goals to two in that game. And that's because I changed the mentality at a point when I knew we were leading 4-0. So I kind of turned it down a bit so my players wouldn't get tired because I'm used to that. I don't want my players to get tired ever so often. Then we beat Atletico Madrid in the return fixture. We've played them before, right? So we won Atletico twice. We beat Atletico Madrid and then Liverpool came along. This is the game I knew I was supposed to lose this game regardless of what happens. But then I just stuck to the tactic and then get, set my players to go as they are. No opposition instructions whatsoever. And then Liverpool struggled throughout the game with completely dominant throughout this game. That's why I knew that this tactic is actually something special. So you can try it. I'm going to leave a link in the description so you can download the FM22 version of this tactic and try it for yourself and see how it works. I still have a, lot, a long way to go in the season. That's why I'm happy I made the switch early because I know I'm going to get good results with this tactic and I know I'm going to qualify for probably Europa or even the Champions League. I don't know how far we are from winning the league. It depends on what position and how many matches we've played so far. I could still have a dream of winning the league. Okay, 13 games out of 38. Do you think we could still win the league? <laughs> it's possible. But looking as, as it is right now, we've considered a lot of goals, so that's minus 8. But possibly we can get into the European competitions, either the Champions League or the Europa League. And then next season, we'll probably thrive and look forward to winning the league. I'm going to keep testing the tactic and I have to, to be honest with you, thank you guys for staying this long with this video and remember to leave a like. I, I threw out this video, I did actually ask you guys to subscribe. Oh my god. Well, remember to leave a like and on this video and then to also subscribe to the channel because I normally test tactics like this whenever I find one that is unique or whenever I create something that is unique. I usually trust, try to, you know, recreate this tactic and share the video with you guys here on Dark Horse FM. So, Remember to leave a like in the description to leave a like in the video down below and then also subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications so you can get the the notification when one video pops up and then whenever I find another interesting tactic to share with you guys. So I'll catch you guys in the next video when I find something else to share and I'll catch you guys later. Uh, by the way, in case I forget, happy new year.